I wanted to ask a question for for both of you. And Nika, I guess you can go first. With this being your first experience in the MCU, how does it differ from your previous films? I know the scope and scale of the Marvel Cinematic Universe can be a bit daunting. So how was your approach to it? Yeah. You know, it was it was it was pretty daunting. Um, I'm a big fan of the genre, but have never been a, a part of anything like this. So I really um, honestly, I didn't know what to expect, how I guess I wasn't prepared to, to see how grand of a scale it was all like there were actual physical sets there. Yeah. It was it was I mean, I was, when I was talking to Miriam and, and Chuck about this. It's a, it was a lot like doing theater because of the scale of the sets and just yeah, the, the grandness of everything. And plus, you know, the characters that we play sort of were very theatrical to begin with. So right. it really was sort of like, um, you know, in, in a previous life, I, I used to work um, as a dresser for a theater company. So I, for a Shakespeare festival, no less. So I really was kind of like, oh, this harkens me back to the days where I would be backstage sort of like watching these great Shakespearean actors perform. And I would just be in the back sort of like watching you know, and because Chuck and Miriam were so amazing in portraying these characters, like I had to snap out of it a couple of times and be like, you're in the scene with them. Like you're, you're working <laughs> right now. Like be present, be present. That's amazing. What about you, Miriam? It's, it's true. You know, I'm a huge, huge fan of this particular genre as well. So it was like a dream come true. To, it was like suddenly you're a normal human adult and the inner child is like screaming the entire time that you're on the set that you get to actually play in the sandbox. You know, you can't believe it, but you have to be professional. So, you know, it was good uh, to yeah. that, right. <laughs> Which I don't know if I actually achieved, but uh, I tried. Um, yeah, it really, it really was. We were on the carpet uh, for the the premiere and it was like the three of us like hugging each other, you know, and, and mm. Chuck was like, it doesn't kind of matter what you do. This is like as, this is kind of as big as it gets, you know? I mean, the scale yeah. of this is all of all around. So like, enjoy. It was like a nice yeah. reminder to like, remember to enjoy it. Cause kind of what's the point if you don't. That actually leads to another question that I had uh, since you both were talking about your, your experience with Chuck, right? His, his presence on screen in this film is so grandiose and so big. The high evolutionary I love how he's able to, on like a dime, go from calm and collected to just like insane as the film goes on. What was it like kind of matching that energy or working off of him in those scenes? Well, I feel it's kind of like when you play tennis with someone who's really good, your game gets better. Mm -hmm. That's that I'm terrible at tennis no matter what. It doesn't matter how good you are. I'm not going to do that. But in acting, uh, that's kind of how it feels, right? Like it gives you permission to... Uh, raise the stakes to the highest level which is the most fun way to do it you know I mean so it's it it everyone was so welcoming too do you find that Nico yeah. that you just yeah I'm afraid to take to go for it you right know? and I think with with James directing um Chuck's character you know like like Miriam said it was kind of like a game of tennis you were you were all of a sudden allowed to match this level and match the evilness and match the despicableness of, of the the world that we were living in um we really took our cues from from Chuck you know there was that one um the walk and talk scene that the three of us did where truly like that day I was like I can feel his seething anger just <laughs> emanating from him. It, it's such a quiet rage that lives inside the high evolutionary. And I really like felt like when that scene I was like, I think Chuck might kill me when James Yell's cut. Uh, <laughs> I have yeah, been. but yeah. I also feel like how we did a lot of takes of that. I was like, have we walked like 15 miles down this one hallway? <laughs> mm -hmm. I was like, I'm really getting yeah. like my workout. Today's a leg day. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I was so nervous. I, that scene, I was so nervous for that scene. I, I don't know if you remember, I kept like fobbing my lines and I was like, I'm sorry. I swear to God, I've done this before. No, but just, I feel like it was the actual, nervous. that worked so well for the energy because the truth is this is a person who will create and destroy on a whim. Yeah. Yes. So, I mean, I'm sure we've all had bosses like that. Um, yeah. <laughs> this is the worst. <laughs> 
boss ever. Like that's the t-shirt. Worst yeah. boss ever. Yeah. Just like them and, and the <laughs> front. The, the high evolutionary wear Frodo. Um, <laughs> you know. That's that's the Disney Plus show we need right there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> One of the most standout scenes in the film for me is as we were seeing more of the high evolutionary, you and the other people in the room eventually turn your guns on the high evolutionary. What was it like reading that part of the script when you're like, oh, we're going to have a small revolt? Mutiny. <laughs> uh, I don't know if we're, are, we're spoiling it. I don't, are we yes, allowed to spoil spoilers it? are good. Then I just disappear and you never hear from me again. No, um, I, I <laughs> no, I, that moment, are you kidding me? That was a fantastic when I read that moment. I was like, I'm taking, I'm taking over the ship. I'm taking over the ship. Oh my God, I'm taking over the ship. Um, when my space gun. It was like, uh, it, that's the, that's the scene you've played in. That's the scene I've played in like every basement and backyard since I was six years old you know what I mean mm -hmm. and I was getting to do it so it was it was beautiful I was I was very very excited um to do that you know and yeah. it doesn't quite go as she planned yeah <laughs> it's short lived <laughs> it's not the longest she could still put it on a resume though but it's not the longest job she's ever held um the captain of the ship that <laughs> great turning turning point too also look i could write a dissertation on the all these movies i get over intellectualize everything because it just makes it fun for me and i'm a sci-fi nerd and that's what we do so i was like this is really that moment when the person who's been following the leader into the worst possible place over the worst possible cliff has that moment right before of like wait where why you know what am i doing and that yeah. moment of questioning, because we've seen th these these leaders can go nowhere without followers. Mm -hmm. And so what what allows a person or a being to follow a leader, the, the worst possible leader? And and when is the what is that moment like for them when they realize, oh, my God, I'm I've led myself off the cliff. Like I've followed this person off the cliff. And so that moment was kind of fun to play where you're like, yeah, putting on the brakes. Nope. Too late. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I mean, I that's think powerful. That's, I think that's what I mean. At, at least the way I saw recorded Teal was like, you know, he was for Teal. It was like survival at any cost, which is why he kept following um, the high evolutionary and just following his orders and just being so loyal to him. But then he would be um, the cause of of our demise, which <laughs> I yeah. think is so ironic. That um, yeah, that's that's how we that's how we go because of him. Yeah. We're running out of time here, but uh, Nico, I did have one more question for you uh, regarding Teal. You become like the fixation for Star-Lord. Once he finds out, you can possibly get him the files to save Rocket. What was it like <laughs> when you had to go against Star-Lord and Groot? Like, it got really intense there. <laughs> it got very intense. That scene was also such a big um day of shooting um and it was the most fun because you had you know we were shooting parts with chuck and miriam and then parts with with me and and chris pratt and and groot and then you had all the guards and the other the other recorders it was like i don't know it was just like a such a fun day on set because you got to see the full sort of like this is a marvel production and we are gonna have the stunts and the explosions and and the cgi like like everything was sort of just like happening that day and so i was just like bring it i'm i'm like literally living my dream right now and we are filming like this huge marvel scene and i don't know it was sort of kind of like an out-of-body experience i was kind of just watching it from from high above because I'm just like i cannot believe this is happening no, oh, I know as a fan, you're like, how do they make this? Oh, this is how they do it. Okay, yeah, watch. Exactly. That's exactly what it's like. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time, guys. It's been a blast. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.